When I was a kid, I used to think that pork chops and karate chops were the same thing. I thought they were both pork chops, and because my grandmother thought it was cute, and because they were my favorite, she let me keep doing it. Not really a big deal. One day before I realized fat kids are not designed to climb trees, I fell out of a tree and bruised the right side of my body. I didn't want to tell my grandmother about it, because I was afraid I'd get in trouble for playing somewhere that I shouldn't have been. A few days later, the gym teacher noticed the bruise, and I got sent to the principal's office. From there, I was sent to another small room with a really nice lady who asked me all kinds of questions about my life at home. I saw no reason to lie. As far as I was concerned, life was pretty good. I told her, whenever I'm sad, my grandmother gives me karate chops. This led to a full-scale investigation, and I was removed from the house for three days until they finally decided to ask how I got the bruises. The news of the silly little story quickly spread to the school, and I earned my first nickname, Pork Chop. To this day, I hate pork chops. I'm not the only kid who grew up this way. Surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme about sticks and stones, as if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, and we got called them all. So we grew up believing no one would ever fall in love with us. That we'd be lonely forever. That we'd never meet someone. To make us feel like the sun was something they built for us in their tool shed. So broken heartstrings bugged the blues as we tried to empty ourselves. So we would feel nothing. Don't tell me that hurts less than a broken bone. And an ingrown life is something surgeons can cut away. But there's no way for it to make metastasize. It does. She was eight years old on first day of grade three when she got called ugly. We both got moved to the back of the class. So we'd get bombarded by spitballs. But the school halls were a battleground where we found ourselves outnumbered day after wretched. We used to stay inside for recess, because outside was worse. Outside, we'd have to rehearse running away. I learned to stay still like statues, giving no clues that we were there. In grade five, they taped a sign to her desk that read, Beware of dog. To this day, despite a loving husband, she doesn't think she's beautiful. Because of a birthmark that takes up a little less than half of her face, kids used to say she looks like a wrong answer that someone tried to erase but couldn't quite get the job done. That they'll never understand. That she's raising two kids whose definition of beauty begins with the word mom. Because they see her heart before they see her skin. That she's only ever always been amazing. He was a broken branch. Grafted onto a different family tree. Adopted. But not because his parents opted for a different destiny. He was three when he became a mixed drink, but one part left alone, two parts tragedy. Started therapy in eighth grade, had a personality of made-up tests and pills, lived like the uphills were mountains and the downhills were cliffs, and bore a fifth suicidal tidal wave of antidepressants and adolescence of being called a pauper, one part because of the pills, and then that 99 parts because of the cruelty. He tried to kill himself in grade 10, when a kid who still had his mom and dad had the audacity to tell him to get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in the first aid kit. To this day, he's a stick on TNT, lit from both ends. Could describe to you in detail the way the sky bends, and the moment before it's about to fall, and despite of an army of friends who who all call him an inspiration, he remains a conversation piece between people who can't understand that sometimes becoming drug-free has less to do with addiction, more to do with sanity. We weren't the only kids who grew up this way. To this day, kids are still being called names. The classics were, hey stupid, hey spaz. Seems like each closet arsenal of names getting updated every year. And if a kid breaks in school and no one around chooses to hear, do they make sounds? Are they just the background noise of a soundtrack stuck on repeat when people say things like, kids can be cruel? Every school is a big top circus hit. The pecking order went from acrobats to lion tamers, clowns to carnies. All 
love these were miles ahead of who we were. We were freaks. Lobster claw boys and bearded ladies, oddities, juggling depression and loneliness, playing solitaire spin the bottle, trying to kiss the wounded part of ourselves and heal. But at night, while the others slept, we kept walking the tightrope. It was practice. Maybe have some of us fell. But I want to tell them that all of this shit is just debris left over when we finally decided to smash all the things we thought we used to be. And if you can't see anything beautiful about yourself, get a better mirror. Stare a little longer, look a little closer, because there's something inside you that made you keep trying. Despite everyone who told you to quit, you built a cast around your broken heart and signed it yourself. You signed it they were wrong. Because maybe you didn't belong to a group or clique. Maybe they decided to pick you last for basketball or everything. Maybe you used to bring bruises and broken teeth to show and tell but never told. Because how can you hold your ground if everyone around you wants you to bury wants to bury you beneath it? You have to believe they were wrong. They have to be wrong. Why else would we still be here? I grew up learning to cheer on the underdog. Because we see ourselves in them. We stem from a root planted in belief. That we are not what we are called. We are not an to call stalled out and sitting empty on the highway. If in some way we are, don't worry. We only got out to walk and get gas. We are graduating members from the class of fuck off we make it not to fade over the echoes of voices crying out your names will never hurt of course they did but their lives will only ever always continue to be a bouncing act that has less to do with pain more to do with beauty